Hello and welcome to Keeping It Young Podcast, conversations about marriage, family, and ministry life. I'm Dave. And I'm Bethley. And we are the Youngs. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. And this is a special week. And just here in a couple of days, we're going to be meeting many of you at the Couples Prayer Advance in Pigeon Forge. Yay! And uh, we've talked about this so many times, and we're so excited this week is finally here. We are. And that's going to be a great week, and I can't wait to see so many of you. We've so enjoyed uh, all these uh, discussions we've been able to have with you about conflict resolution. And, uh, <laughs> it was just making me kind of chuckle here. We've so enjoyed <laughs> conflict. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I do feel like the feedback has been very helpful that, that the Lord's really, really used this one. And so mm-hmm. we're very, very grateful for that. Yes. Because we live in this sin curse world, it's very normal to have conflict. Yes. And conflict is just part of our lives, but mm-hmm. learning how to handle it. It's uh, what's what do we always say there? We we're not trying to avoid conflict. We're trying to learn how to handle conflict in a healthy way. Right. And that's what we're trying to help you with. Mm-hmm. And of course, we've uh, covered a lot of territory. And last week we started this little series involving special case scenarios. Mm-hmm. And uh, primarily, we're focusing on blended families. Yes. And we um, just reminded you last week of a great verse. Uh, we talked about how Jesus said, remember that no one can serve two masters. Right. No man can serve two masters. He will either hate the one, love the other, and serve the one, despise the other. Right. And, uh, and, and so forth in the Gospel of Matthew there. And it's just a reminder, blended families have more players involved and yes. therefore have more struggles. Yes. And I know that uh, there's every kind of situation as you all are listening, and yet I'm, I'm aware that God knows. I want you to know that God knows your situation. Yes. And uh, blended families or struggling families are the norm in the Bible. There are more that struggled than there are that, that are listed without struggles. True. Right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we just find out, as, you know, as far as spiritually goes, Timothy was greatly used of God. He was Paul's buddy and Paul's mentee. <laughs> and uh, yet, uh, Timothy, it appears, you know, his dad wasn't a, a believer. There was a special case scenario. Right. But his grandmother Lois was, and his mother Eunice was a believer. Right. And uh, grandma and mom influenced Timothy in spite of the fact that it appears his dad was not a believer. And, right. And so uh, God cares about your special case scenario, and especially you that have a blended family or are dealing with blended family situations or divorce situations. And so Beth and I are just trying to give you some practical advice and wisdom, some steps you can take to help overcome these situations and solve the conflicts that are unique to these situations. Yes. So last week, we started last week with Mm -hmm. do your best to get everybody on the same page. Yes. And I don't know that we could ever say enough about that one. Mm -hmm. You have to be in unity. Right. And it's not easy. It's um, it's going to have challenges. It's going to take uh, extra effort. Right. It always takes effort to be on the same page, doesn't it? It and, does. Uh, it just always does. But in a situation where you're dealing with, you know, a divorced uh, couple, and especially if there's marriage and remarriage involved, mm-hmm. and kids and grandkids, and and on top of that, kids and stepkids, and right. there are so many angles to take of this. So the goal. Let's review that just briefly. The goal is to win. Right. And it's a win-win. The goal is win-win. Yes. And if you're on the same team, and families mm-hmm. are. You know, your children are his children and his children are your children. And right. And that's your, you know, if you kids are listening, you know, that stepdad is your mom's husband. Right. And all of those, the, the whole goal of, of this is that we would have, we would create win-win situations. Yes. And a winning, winning is finding a solution mm-hmm. that all parties feel good about. Yes. And uh, that's going to take two things. And here's where we uh, (laughs) spent our time last week. It's going to take a willingness to communicate and a willingness to give. Yes. And by that, we mean a willingness to give in, Mm -hmm. a willingness to say, okay, we'll do it your way. Mm -hmm. Or could we do this instead? Right. And it's a give and take. It's a discussion that comes to the best possible winning scenario for all the parties involved. Yes. And can we just say something to you moms and dads that have been through a divorce situation? Never allow yourself to get to the point to where you are so defensive of your rights, your positions, that you let it damage your children. Right. Just be 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 
be very wise about that. Yes. Okay. Any further thought before we leave that? I don't think that? so. I think we can jump into today's topic, which is, I mean, the same topic, the yes. special case scenarios of blended families, but the next point. Yes. There you go. So the first point was do your best to get everybody on the same page. And yes. the second point, you want to read that for us? Is allow the other parent to lead when they, meaning the children, are on their turf or under their responsibility. Now that's a hard one. That is a hard one. But it absolutely has to be that way because mm-hmm. Jesus said no man can serve two masters. Yes. And so you have to be willing to let the other parent lead mm-hmm. and, and keep your thinking correct. Uh, you know, Beth and I were thinking just in a practical sense, this doesn't, I don't want this to sound calloused or uncaring, but, but remember that uh, if you're a mom and you're concerned about the other parent, mm-hmm. do, do, do at least remember there was a time in your life that you thought so highly of this other parent that you were willing to forsake all others, prepare for a wedding, right. you got married, yes. you had children. Yes. Are there hurts involved? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Are there wounds? Probably. Mm-hmm. Are there some things that likely your heart will never be the same in those areas? Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about it. Right. But but do allow yourself to remember that that this person is a person created in the image of God and they have value. Mm-hmm. And, and both of you, uh, in a divorce situation, a blended family situation, just just recognize that both of you are responsible for your children to win. Mm-hmm. And as difficult as it's going to be, you do have to allow the other parent to lead when your children are on their turf or under their responsibility. Right. And, uh, and, and another way of saying that is be aware that you can only lead your family when they're under your care and your responsibility. Right. And so he said, well, but hold on a minute. How do you do that? Well... I, I guess there's a couple of things we could say. Work to show kindness and grace to all parties involved. Mm. So if your kids are going to, say, be with mom for the weekend or with dad for the weekend, uh, make sure that you teach them uh, in dad's absence to respect their dad. Right. Uh, Daddy, you make sure that when they're, the kids are with you that you teach them to respect their mom. Right. You can have all kinds of angst in your heart against your former spouse. Mm-hmm. Um, your ex, as our culture would say, yes. you can have all kinds of problems there and, and all kinds of angst and challenges and difficulties, but never allow that to spill over into causing your children to have to choose between their mom and your angst. Right. Is that, is that a valid way to say it? Yeah. So I would say what you're, what you're saying there is don't talk bad about that's, their parents. That's a cl- just as simple as you to can say. To them it. in that parent's absence. Yes, that's absolutely right. Um, just like you yeah. wouldn't, even if you're you're in a married situation, I, I have to be very careful if I were frustrated at David not to mention that to charity, not to say, oh, your father, can you believe he just did that? And I can only imagine that it would be so easy to do that in a divorce situation. Your father should never allow you to do that. I would never allow you to do that. That's just wrong and um, and to take off from there. But don't make your children feel like they're pulled between you two. If you need to have a conversation, refer to last week's episode and call the spouse and say, hey, can we talk this through a little bit? I, I'm not really sure I'm on the same page with your direction with the children. But do understand that when they're with your ex-spouse, they are under their parental guidance and responsibility. Yeah, and let that happen. Yes. Yes, you have to let that happen. And you know, just let's just stop here and, and just mention this. It very well may be that you have fallen into a habit with your children of bashing their mom or their dad. Mm-hmm. And this isn't just in a blended family. Maybe you have a nuclear family and You've never been through a divorce, but you're in the habit of, you know, rolling your eyes and Mm -hmm. sighing at each other in the kid's presence or to the kids. You've allowed, allowed that to happen. Then this is a time for you, number one, to make that right with God, to say, Lord, I'm, I, I'm, I want you to forgive me for how I've treated my spouse or my ex. Right. And then communicate that to your children to say to a son or daughter, Hey, listen, I've, I don't think I've been wise in how I've talked about your dad. Mm. you know, dad and I divorced and you know that that's been hard on me, but I know he's your dad mm-hmm. and I want you to love your dad 
and respect your dad. And I'm just really sorry. I talk that way about your mom or your dad. Right. Make that right. Mm -hmm. Communicate that to your children that you're trying to make that right. Yes. And then, and then just be willing. And it's okay to say to your children, you can say to your children, I know that dad lets you do that, but when you're here, we don't do that. Right. Or you can say, I don't let you do that, but I know you're going to dad's this weekend and he's going to let you. And dad's responsible there. Mm. And, and, and it's better to just sit, just to gently, kindly acknowledge that and say it. Mm -hmm. Because what you're doing there then is you're allowing your child in each scenario to honor the particular authority at that time in their life. Right. And that's all you can do here. Mm -hmm. Rarely can you have a situation to where mom, you're always going to get your way over your ex. Mm -hmm. And, and dad, if you're thinking you're always going to get your way over your ex with the kids, then, then quite gently to say it gently, you're, you are being foolish there. Right. That's not going to happen. So what we want to just say is putting it as a point, allow the other parent to lead when your children are on their turf or under their responsibility. Yes. And, and I understand this would be very difficult. You're not in a marriage situation anymore. And so the roles and responsibilities that come in a married couple, whereas David is leading our home and I am partnering, partnering with him um, and submitting to his leadership, and then we can talk about our roles as parents. I know that you don't have that opportunity, but I know that even in a married situation, when children come into the home, and, and maybe this is just um, from a woman's perspective, the wife's perspective, there are so many opportunities for the wife to be like, oh my goodness, he didn't do that right. He doesn't bathe the baby right. He doesn't dress the baby right. He doesn't diaper the baby right. And and our thinking is it's not right. But girls, just remember, it's just different. So that I think that that kind of thinking would be compounded if you're dealing with an ex-spouse when the children go stay with dad over the weekend and maybe they don't brush their teeth as often as you'd like them to or they don't eat all the healthy foods that you would feed them during the week. Don't let that bother you. Don't let them bo that bother you. It's not a situation of right or wrong. It's just different. Dad does it different than you do and allow them to be with dad and under his authority. And you know what? That, that is just incredible advice. We've talked in the past about how that uh, our differences in relationships can either be frustrations or, or opportunities for endearments. Mm. And, uh, and the idea has been like, you know, in a marriage when your husband, you know, he doesn't you know, bathe the baby the way you would, or he doesn't, you know, lead the kids the way you would, or he doesn't make them eat the food you would make them eat. Right. Uh, you can either be very frustrated about that and fuss about it and ridicule it and be sarcastic about it and be pointed about it, mm -hmm. or you can be endearing about it. Right. And when you're endearing about it, you say things like, uh, isn't that adorable? I would never do it that way, but I just love how, you know, and name. Mm -hmm. I just love that dad lets the kids, dad has no problem with our kids eating McDonald's and I would never let my kids eat McDonald's. <laughs> but you make that a sweet matter instead of a sarcastic, belittling, separating matter. Right. And in a situation where there is the divorce situation where you're not going to probably be saying endearments about your ex-spouse, sure. you certainly could build that to the children. You could, you know, if your children say, dad said we're going to have a pizza party and we're going to stay up late watching movies or playing video games on Friday night. I'm so excited. Instead of rolling your eyes and getting irritated about that, are you kidding me? You need to eat healthy food and you need to go to bed on time. You need to say, oh my goodness, you are going to have so much fun. Isn't that going to be fun? And build up the other parent to your children. Yeah, and you can even and say things like, I'm so glad that your dad is spending time with you. Yes. And uh, so look for ways, look for ways to, to uh, allow the other parent to lead yes. and celebrate that. Mm -hmm. Here's number three. Let's move to number three. All right. And, and, and the phraseology here is important. Mm -hmm. Talk through expectations and ramifications in a blended family situation. Yes. And, and I'm not saying give expectations and ramifications, mm -hmm. talk through them. And I think at this point, we're talking more from the parent to the child yes. instead of the divorcees talking to each other, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. so for instance, if you have, you know, if you're remarried or you're a single parent or you have kids or stepkids or whatever in your house, you have to talk through the expectations and the ramifications. You have to have conversations in which you say, like, for instance, dad, listen, if you have a, a, uh, a stepson, mm -hmm. uh, mom, you and you and dad need to get on the same page about what you expect. Right. And there has to be a lot of give there. Dad, mm -hmm. if you're a stepdad, 
Don't be so unwise as to force your positions and ways on a son that is not technically yours. Right, and who has lived most of his life without you. And so what you do in that situation is you and mom boil things down. You get on the same page, or or mom, you and dad. Mm -hmm. You get on the same page, but at the same time, the two of you together talk things through with the stepchildren or, or the children that are involved. And, and you, you teach them, this is what we expect, mm-hmm. and then let them come to a, a consensus with you about, okay, let them, let them ask questions. If they, they may say, wait a minute, uh, I, this won't work for this reason. Mm-hmm. And if you are safe, if, if, if a child feels safe sharing with you their wishes, their desires, their concerns, their troubles... Right. Then listen to them mm-hmm. and evaluate them. It might be that you're like, you know what? I hadn't thought of it from your perspective. So we will give in that area mm-hmm. and allow it to be done a different way. Right. That's that's not that's not undermining your authority. That's teaching a child who is under your care to think, mm-hmm. to evaluate, to know how to come to you with issues and situations. Some people, sometimes we can be so petty that we think if our kids question us in their teen years that, oh my goodness, they're a rebel. Right. But if you teach a, ch- a, t- a child in their teen years is making the transition from the, the child whose parents are always right and they just love mommy and daddy, mm-hmm. the teen years are a time when a child is learning how to become an adult on their own. Mm-hmm. So they need you not, not just to tell them what to do. Mm-hmm. They need you to help them to think and to work through things, and to know right. how to give and take. Because in every marriage, you have some give and take. And every marriage is, you know yes. what, we'll do it your way. Mm-hmm. And um, many of you remember the story we told about our, our son and his his wife when they got married, and they had a disagreement over the butter dish. <laughs> does it go on the counter, or does it go in the fridge? Mm-hmm. Well, there's give and take on those kind of things. Yes. Those Sometimes those can become huge problems to where we roll our eyes and sigh about, I can't believe they do that. Right. And it's really foolish when we allow that to happen, isn't it? Absolutely. And I would say under this point, too, sometimes in a divorce situation, the hurt and the wound that is given to the married spouses who are now divorced is so huge that they cannot see past their own hurt to the hurt of the children. And I I cannot imagine, I did not come from a divorced home. I came from a very solid, loving home. I cannot imagine the hurt, the insecurity, Mm -hmm. the fear, the anxiety that comes um, when a child goes through a divorce situation where their parents Mm -hmm. split up. And so being aware of that um, as the the parent of those children and then maybe the step parent of those children, being aware of that and becoming a new family, um, you're married to a new person, um, then you just have so much that you need to talk through. You have so much that you need to communicate. And one of those things that you need to talk through and communicate is that extra security, that uh, Uh, that acknowledgement of, I know that you've been hurt. And this is how the Bible tells us to deal with our hurt. And if you're only looking at your own hurt and you're not observing what the children are going through at the same time, and you're trying to just manage them and micromanage them and maybe make demands on them, hey, we're a new home and this is what we're going to do. And I know you do this at dad's, but we're not going to do it that way. And um, it's just a recipe for a lot of um, needless conflict. Absolutely. So be so very, very careful. You're talking through expectations and ramifications about yes. this is what we do at our home. Yes. You come to a consensus together on that, mm-hmm. and then you add to it mm-hmm. at dad's or at mom's. We just want you to know they're in charge. Right. And you honor your dad and your mom when you're there. Right. Moms and dads, this will work, but mm-hmm. you have to make it work. Yes. Yes. Okay, so let's go to number four. All right. Allow your stepchildren to determine the consequences of breaking your rules. Mm. Now, and, and you do this in advance. Uh, moms and dads, listen, if you're if you're remarried in a, in a divorce situation and you have stepchildren, children and stepchildren, mm-hmm. start in advance by clearly defining the rules where parents are in complete agreement. Mm-hmm. And they are they are clearly delineated to the children. Right, they're discussed, they're accepted upon. Mm-hmm. And sometimes there's there's areas where you can give. There's other areas where you know in our home we do not do this. It, right. It's not up 
open for discussion. Nobody's mad. Mm -hmm. But at our home, this is how we respond. This is what we do. This is what we do not do. Right. You clearly define that, but you get together as mm -hmm. parents with the stepchildren mm -hmm. and together determine the ramifications of failure. Mm. So if you do not you know, obey our rules, mm -hmm. then what will we do about it? What will be the ramification? And you discuss that together and come up with an acceptable solution on both sides. Mm -hmm. So it might be that, okay, if I don't do that, I can't play video games for a week. Right. If I don't do that, then I lose my phone for a week. Mm -hmm. Or if I don't do that, I have to do the dishes every night by myself for a week. Mm -hmm. So there is a set, you know, predetermined outcome. And I would even go so far as to ask for a signature. Mm -hmm. Write down the predetermined outcome. And what you're teaching your kids is that their name, you know, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Mm -hmm. You're teaching your children there that, you know what, when you put your signature on a line, what you're doing is you're saying, I agree with this and mm -hmm. I accept this and I, I will with my name. Mm -hmm. agree that I will follow it. Well, and I would say that the parents should sign it too. Then yes. they should say, okay, this is what we've I agreed agree. on. Ask yes. for a signature. Both of you sign it. And then do one more thing with that. Once you have come to a conclusion of this is what we did our family, mm -hmm. and you've discussed this with your stepson or stepdaughter or your son or your daughter, mm -hmm. and everybody is in agreement on this. This is, this is what we expect. We've all agreed on this. And this is what's going to happen if we break that rule. Mm -hmm. Then it's entirely fine, perhaps, to communicate that to the other parent. Right. To say to the other parent, hey, just so you know, mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about this. These are the rules that we're going to follow. And remember that a soft answer turns away wrath, so you never get belligerent about this. But it's just a communication of saying, just so you know, this is what we expect when the kids are at our home. And this is what John or Sarah or Sue, they agreed that this would be the ramification if they broke it. Mm -hmm. And that way you never have the other parent going, I can't believe you are punishing my child for this. Right. It's already communicated that this was going to happen and you have it in writing and it's right. signed. Right. And punishments um, it will come. Discipline does come, but they should never involve something negative to do with the other parent. It Absolutely. should not be, well, you know what? Your dad was going to take you to that basketball game, but now you can't go. Um, you can, you should not take time away from the other parent. They need time with their parents. And in a technical sense, you can't do that. That's true. You know, that doesn't work. Right. So here, here's two more things and our time will be gone. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're talking about a blended family, number five, keep an open door of communication and take every discussion seriously. Yes. Meaning that if your stepson or stepdaughter or your son or daughter is having a hard time with the step parent, mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you hear them out, that you let them know you care, that you will consider it, that you will communicate with all parties to find a win-win solution. Yes. And I keep saying that. Yes. And we keep mentioning that win-win, but it, it's essential. You've got to win at these these scenarios. Mm -hmm. And hopefully what you're doing as the quote unquote step parent is that you are not working to all um, just step into a role that really they already have fulfilled in their parents. Their parents just aren't living together, um, but that you are working to love them as Christ loved them the church as Christ loved us, that you are working to win their heart and not in a manipulative way at all, in a very sincere way of, hey, I care about you. Obviously, I care enough about your mom or your dad to marry them. And so I care about you because you're a package deal to me. And I'm going to do everything I can to love on you, to disciple you, to be there for you. And how can I do that best? And so you just need to study that child. Um, if they like to be outdoors, go outdoors with them. If they like to watch a movie, watch a movie with them. And do everything you can to win their trust, to win their heart, and to love on them. And then you have that open door of communication when there is that angst that will come up, because it will, because you're a blended family. Well, it comes <laughs> when there's not a blended Absolutely. family. Angst does come up, and you've got to have that open door of communication. Sure. And then here's one more thing we'll share with you guys. Remember that in a divorce and remarriage situation, you as a parent will have to handle your own emotions well mm. in order to handle your child's emotions well. 
Right. And the one thing that is certain across the board when you're dealing in a blended family, a divorce situation, there is a ton of emotion involved. Yes. In fact, in coming episodes, just to give you a heads up, Bethany and I are going to be talking about handling our emotions well in marriage and family. Yes. And uh, we'll be dealing with several situations like anger or you know, hurt feelings or Mm -hmm. bitterness and forgiveness. And Mm -hmm. there's a lot. Narcissism, that's a word that we're going to be talking about. So just in in the situation where there's a blended family, handle your own emotions well, because Mm -hmm. I will tell you that your children's emotions are going to be exponentially greater Mm. if there's been a divorce and remarriage situation. Yes. Now, then all of our children handle them differently. Some get explosive, some withdraw, some get, you know... Uh, bitter, some get mm. quiet. It just there's right. so many ways our kids handle them. And moms and dads, um, don't carry this alone. If you've been through a divorce situation, mom, and there's some emotions that you just can't handle, get some biblical, powerful, specific counsel and help. Yes. And and the reason being is because your children need you to be healthy. Yes. Because they're dealing with a lot of emotions in this as well. And the healthier you are, Mm -hmm. the better you are prepared and equipped and able to help your children handle the challenging emotions. It's not their fault. No. And yet they're going to have to face all this just Mm -hmm. the same way that you're facing all of this. Right. So this is talking about very simply here, taking a blended family and uh, having conflict resolution in a blended family. Yes. So what else would you add? I think we've about covered it, at least to the best of my knowledge, Sure. just because we are not speaking from experience. Absolutely. But. Now, we'll tell you this, um, Beth and I don't have all the answers, obviously, but sometimes mm-hmm. you have a special situation in which you just don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And what we have found out is that oftentimes getting a third party involved, a neutral party, yes, to listen, to evaluate, to make suggestions, mm-hmm. uh, can be helpful. So if we can help you in that situation at all, write the story down and email mm-hmm. it to us. And, and even uh, when you write the story down, or, or it doesn't have to be us, go to someone you love and trust. I often think it's good to write the story down. Mm-hmm. You can tell it, but but writing it you know, forces you to process your thoughts into, into pen and paper and, and print. Right. And, and let a third party look them over. Maybe write some questions in there. What would you do? Or, mm-hmm. or am I handling things correctly? What do you think I could change? What should right. I be asking of you know, the other party? Mm-hmm. And uh, get some help and some wisdom. So if you want to reach out to us, we'd be glad to hear from you. And you'll find our email online. You'll find, uh, of course, the microphone on the, the just the very front page of keepingityoungpodcast.com. Mm-hmm. Click on that microphone. It'll tell you how to record a message, and it will come to us via email. And uh, we can hear your voice, so we can get the <laughs> tone, the inflection, the you know, yes. and all of those sort of things. So we are just so grateful you've joined us uh, over these last few weeks. We are going to be talking next week about conflict resolution between parents and adult children. Yes. And that will not be a very long one, but there's some special situations involved in parenting Mm -hmm. adult children. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we hope you'll join us for that. We'll give you some advice and and thoughts concerning that as well. Anything you'd add, my love? I don't think so. All right. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, we're just always honored to have you. I hope this week ahead that you will serve the Lord with gladness. The Keeping It Young podcast is a Bax 5 Media production.